The next person doesn't really need an introduction to this crowd, but let me, in an obligatory way, read quickly the two paragraphs I have in front of me. Dr. Robert Carr has been active in the field of HIV since 2000, when he began research and advocacy on stigma and discrimination against people living with HIV in Jamaica, and then in 2002 became Executive Director of Jamaica AIDS Support for Life, a national NGO serving the most disenfranchised in Jamaican society, including prisoners, the hearing impaired, sex workers, and gay and other men who have sex with men. Since then, Dr. Carr has gone on to be co-founder of the Caribbean Vulnerable Communities Coalition, a coalition of indigenous frontline service providers working on rights-based programming with marginalized groups across the Caribbean. He is co-chair of the Caribbean Vulnerable Communities Coalition and director of policy and advocacy at the International Coalition of AIDS Services Organizations. And if you will permit me exercising the, uh, the so-called rights of the moderator, just to say a personal word, Robert Carr has become a dear and trusted and good friend, and he's become much more than that for me. He's become a mentor against whose views I can measure my own instincts and always have my principles strengthened after a conversation with Robert. When Robert came not long ago to our home, because he's now based in Toronto, and we had an evening with the family, the entire family was, I think, collectively charmed and smitten uh, simultaneously. I want you to welcome Robert as he deserves to be welcomed, but I beg you to exercise compassion. He is shaking uncontrollably. He hasn't had his Blackberry for two hours. Robert. Well, all of that is a hard act to follow, including my introduction, but I'm going to try. Um, uh, I don't know where to start. It, there are so many issues that have been raised over the course of today, and I find myself really reflecting on the discrepancy between the kinds of conversations that we've been having over the course of today and all, the, all that we know all that we have been affirming, all that we, we've been discovering, and the discrepancy between that and the way in which the rest of this week is going to unfold, and, and, and the assumptions behind the way the rest of this week is going to unfold. And I, I didn't start out outraged, but after listening to, to, to the presentations this, this evening, I'm really, uh, I'm really uh, concerned about the implications for for what we're going to do in this conference, and beyond that, what we're going to do with this epidemic, and beyond that, the fundamental assumptions that are undergirding the way in which countries are run that are in fact driving the epidemic, so the epidemic becomes a symptom of, of, the, of the dysfunction of the way that societies are, are being run. Uh, and I want to frame my remarks uh, in that regard. I, I stand here uh, uh, bolstered by the, by the picket behind me, with the, with the claims for human rights for all. I'm going to come back to that image uh, in, in a few moments um, at the end of, of, of my brief remarks. The next slide, please. One of, the, one of the things that I think we have to go into this conference demanding, demanding, is that HIV programs for MSM must target social inclusion and focus on key institutions. And by key institutions, I'm talking about institutions like these. Now, you notice I haven't put the National AIDS Control Program. Because I think the narrowing of the, of the focus of what needs to happen to a National AIDS Control Program, even where that National AIDS Control Program has become enlightened after years of advocacy, is quite frankly bullshit and it is completely unacceptable, and we have to refuse to be constrained to a small department in a ministry while the rest of the government arrests us, the rest of the government refuses to acknowledge our partnerships, the rest of the government refuses to acknowledge the need for people to be able to visit their loved ones when they're sick, because all of those things conspire to ensure that the, the work that we're doing to reduce the infections will never be effective. They will never be effective. We have got to break this mindset 
that says that gathering 20 or 30 or 50 of us into a room and teaching us how to put a condom onto a dildo is doing anything to address the raging epidemics that are going on across the world. It is bullshit, and we have to call it bullshit, and we have to let people know that we will not stand by and let them get away with this anymore. Next one.